Hey, this is Ned Frankly. Uh, today we're going to get back to some of the basics and we're going to talk about MIDI routing and uh, specifically we're going to talk about why I put IOT on every one of my synthesizers. I think you probably noticed that on some other people's uh, keyboards as well. Um, what that is is MIDI in, out, and through. And we'll look at the back of the uh, synthesizer and see that that is in fact MIDI in, out, and through. What I want to do for this uh, exercise is want to route MIDI so that I'm playing this keyboard, which right now the microcord just is making a nice little sawtooth, uh, little uh, super saw sound. Um, I want to play that keyboard and I also at the same time want to play this K3 which is set for a pretty generic uh, kind of uh, ensemble sound. And the last thing in line is I want to play my K5. And the K5 is set for a Lyricon sound. So we're going to say Now all three of those sounds uh, separately sound just fine, but I think they're going to sound a lot cooler uh, when we get them all playing from one key. So what I want to do is use this keyboard, the microcorg, and use it as the, the master controller and uh, just play this keyboard and have the other two keyboards respond. So we're going to talk about the MIDI routing involved. The first thing that we're going to talk about is what is the difference between in, out, and through. As you can see, I've got the IOT marks, and the reason you do that is because you very often are, are plugging things in, and you don't want to have to lift the machine up and see what's on the back of it, just so you can see where you're supposed to be plugging in your MIDI cable. So uh, if you mark IOT just below each one, I know that there is the right plug for my MIDI in, out, and through. Now in this case, I'm going to, my input is my fingers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the keys here, and there's my input, so that must mean I'm going to get output from the MIDI uh, port. So I'm going to grab a, a MIDI cable here. And uh, you can tell a MIDI cable, it's a 5-pin DIN. And uh, they all look like this. And I'm going to plug this into the out. As you can see, in, in a, a trick is you kind of rotate the plug until it seats because there's a, there's a little edge on it. Um, so what we want to do is we want to go from the output from the microcord and we're going to control the K3. So what I want to do is I want to go to the input of the K3. So I've got the other end of that cable and I'm going to come into the input. This is again the MIDI input of the K3. And so that's plugged in now. Now the K3 still make sound. But if I play the microcorg, you'll notice that I'm also playing the K3 at the same time. So here's the K3. Here's the microcorg by itself. And now we'll plug the MIDI cable back into the out port. Hard to do with one hand. And We'll actually turn the K3 down a little bit so that you can hear the um, the swell. Now that's just the background. That's what we want to set up uh, just to be the background for a solo. Um, so the solo sound is actually going to come from the Lyricon patch, which is coming from the K5. So I need one more MIDI cable. So I am going to grab my other MIDI cable. It is right here. And uh, I've got 10 foot MIDI cables here, but you can, uh, I think they're good up to about 25 feet. I'm not really sure how far a MIDI cable will go. But here is the trick. Here's where we learn what uh, the through uh, port does. Through is like an extension cable. So what I'm going to do, since I want to get the MIDI note information that's coming into my MIDI in on the K3, it's not coming out of it because only things that I play come out. Only things that I play on the keyboard uh, come on the out. What I'm looking for is things that go through it. 
So the things that go through the K3 are the notes that I'm playing on the microcord. So I've now plugged in a MIDI chord into the through plug. Now I will stretch that out. And we will go all the way across the room. And I've got a bit of a tangle here, but we'll deal with that quickly. Now I'm going to go over to the K5 and I'm going to plug into his end port. You can't really see it, it's back there. But I've I plugged into his MIDI end port. Now, the K5 still plays fine. We'll go over the K3. It's a little quiet, but K3 still plays fine, but if I now go and play from the microcorg, it's playing all three keyboards. So, that is routing MIDI from MIDI out to MIDI in on the K3, from MIDI through on the K3, over to MIDI in on the K5. And that way we can still maintain control of the K3 and the K5 individually. They can still be played by an individual player, or I can play all three instruments from this keyboard here. Now I've made some assumptions. One of the assumptions is that everything is running on MIDI channel 1. If you know anything about MIDI, you may have already changed these things and you already know how to do this particular chain so you wouldn't be watching this video anyway. Um, the, uh, if, if you've changed the MIDI channel, they can go up to channel 16, um, then you may not hear sound from some of your keyboards as you're plugging them in. Also, uh, one thing that uh, the K3 does, which I can't seem to make it stop doing, is it changes patches whenever I change patches on the microcorg. Um, most newer synthesizers have a way to filter that out, but the K3 just seems to like to change patches. So for example, if I go to A38 on the microcorg, you'll notice that we went to patch 24 from patch 23. And that was just from changing the sound on the microcord, which is a completely different sound. So it's actually kind of interesting because you come up with these random combinations of sounds uh, between the synthesizers. Uh, the thing is, the K5 never did change patches. He still thinks he's a lyric on it. So that is all we have. Uh, be sure to uh, hit like and share and subscribe to the channel and we'll keep doing these. If you like what you see, let us know and if you don't, comment and tell us how we can do it better. Thanks.